Focusing on the concept of queer memoir, because we've all been working in this field for quite a while, um, since before indoor plumbing, I think. Um, uh, but so my name is Justin Hall. I'm the chair of the MFA in, uh, in comics program at California College of the Arts um, and a uh, cartoonist as well. Um, I've done memoir work, uh, True Travel Tales, um, uh, uh, Theater of Terror, Revenge of the Queers. I put together a book called No Straight Lines, Four Decades of Queer Comics, um, and was producer of the fe feature-length documentary um, that was inspired by that. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me turn it over to Mr. Rob. Also oh. Queers and Comics, you did that. Oh, right, I was the organizer for the Queers and Comics Conference. I was a Fulbright Scholar, first Fulbright Scholar of Comics. Um, yeah. Yeah, and Justin, don't remember. And I'm a like, great dancer. What? And Justin, <laughs> you also remember, like, don't you have like a like a some kind of a graphic memoir in progress? It or is. Something? It's in yeah. progress. So okay, so this is the issue though, because my graphic memoir in progress was supposed to be named Queer City, but I just d d it's about San Francisco, right? About my gay ass life in San Francisco, and about queer San Francisco history, which is fascinating. Um, uh, but um, apparently, Queer City has been taken by a book about London. What whatever, what? so so I'm gonna to try to fight for that because San Francisco's queer. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you win. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just to, yeah, I just go, okay. Go. Yeah, and I'm Rob Kirby, um, and I started drawing comics in, uh, well, like for real to show people in the very early '90s. Uh, I was inspired by the queer zine explosion that was exploding all around us that had started in the late 80s and I got completely inspired by it. Um, I was finally seeing other voices, voices other than the boring gay mainstream, which I thought was boring. Um, and, and I got this whole network going and I started uh, a zine called Strange Looking Exile and I eventually turned, I mean it was an anthology because I, I immediately from the very beginning I really wanted to uh, kind of get a comradeship with people and you know you develop a community somehow um, and that kind of worked but it was all through the mail. This is pre-internet. Um, and eventually I evolved into doing my own comic strip called Curbside. Um, that was, I, there's two paperback collections. The first one I was self-published with a Zira grant, and the second one was from Cleus Press um, in 2002. And, uh, and I've done lots of anthologies like Queer, which won the Ignatz, and Three, mm -hmm. which, was, uh, which was nominated for an Ignatz, um, and other things like What's Your Sign Girl and the Shirley Jackson Project. And uh, 20 years after Curbside Boys was released, uh, my book, Marry Me a Little, uh, was, came out. Um, well, actually 21 years, so I guess that's not as, okay. But anyway, yeah, so, and that's my newest book. It's a graphic memoir, and the New York Times called it Powerful and Honest, so that was a bucket <laughs> list. And I now turn you over to Mar Mari Naomi, not Mary Naomi. <laughs> Wait, some, what did the New York Times call it? Powerful and Honest. Powerful and Honest. <laughs> Yeah, like didn't yourself. you think so? Yeah, like I'm powerful. Yeah, and you honest. are, and yeah. you're honest. honest. Yeah. Honestly, no, you're a memoir. Yeah. Memoirist, you're not honest. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> By definition, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Um, my name is Mari Naomi. Um, I have been drawing comics since the late 90s. I uh, was reading Rob's comics in the early 90s, and uh, I think that was one of the first autobio comics I came across in, uh, in the San Jose something or other newspaper. Out now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I um, actually thought that Rob Kirby had passed away because someone told, because I couldn't remember your name, and someone on a, on a bulletin board said um, that Jack Kirby had died. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And so for years, I thought you had passed, and I, I, I grieved oh. you. And then, um, and I think it was like 2005 or 2007, like I saw you on a panel. I'm like, oh my God, and it was huge. I was like, not only was, were you alive, arisen like Jesus or something, <laughs> Um, but like there you were right in front of me many years after, like I yeah. was working on my own book and I'd been making comics for a long time and um, and then we became friends. Um, Mar, you realize that the only, you're the only person in the, in the comics world that would have, I mean, I love you, Rob, that, you, that Rob Kirby is more famous than Jack Kirby. I don't know <laughs> anything about Jack Kirby, but I, I was. Who, Jack what, yeah? 
But I even said, oh, no, he died. And, like, no one <laughs> responded to this bullet. Tour. But I was just in shambles. I was a mess. Um, but also, like, so I was reading your stuff at the same time as uh, Tales of the City by Armistead Maupin. So they're very closely intertwined to me. Um, and Michael Mouse was, like, one of my favorite characters. And then there was you, who was your actual character as an autobio person. So, like... I don't know. I eventually um, got to meet Armistead Mopp and he blurred my first book and um, and that was almost as exciting as meeting Rob Kirby and also finding out that he was not dead. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, I, yeah. I make comics and um, I also am the founder and admin of uh, this very boring project called the Cartoonists of Color Database, the Queer Cartoonist Database, and the Disabled Cartoonist Database. Um, I've published nine books so far, um, and that actually the zine up top is is my first uh, self-published scene in 1998 or 1997, um, and I mostly do autobio, um, except for there's a, a trilogy down there of young adult books that um, got banned in Texas, actually. Um, <laughs> it sucks, and <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, and then and also the, there's a neurotic um, book called Dirty Produce, which is about fruits and vegetables having sexual, consensual relations. Um, I think that's everything you need to know about me. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna dive deeper. So, so, <laughs> that's um, all you need to know about right, me. Exactly. The walls go up. Um, <laughs> so actually, I uh, maybe as a first sort of topic um, to throw out what something that just came up with, uh, which is about the idea of of authenticity versus truth uh, in in memoir. Um, are you Lying, Rob yeah. Kirby, when you <laughs> when you call something a, a memoir, are you are you able to lie about your life? Like, what does that mean to you? Um, yeah, I lie. You know, I embellish the truth here and there, but but to me, ultimately, the important thing with the when you're doing, you know, Mary and Me took me a long. It's not a long book, but it took me a really long time. And I think the the main thing when I when I last reread it, I was really happy with it because I just thought this is. Whatever you know, whatever falsities or whatever things I might have embellished, it feels like my true, authentic self. Like mm -hmm. this feels like I, my, this book feels sincere. It feels like it really is. I I tried to make it as true an expression as I could of my feelings about marriage and all that other stuff. And um, and some people, you know, one of my best bad reviews on Goodreads said, well, uh, I I just don't think he had much to say about marriage. And I said to myself, but I wrote a book about. <laughs> so, hmm. I, I just couldn't wrap my head around that one, but it, it felt like my authentic self, and so, I, and and I do feel like it is very important to tell. The most important thing is tell a good story. You know, obviously, when I was leaving this government center after we got our license, obviously, people, the people weren't cheering us and saying, "You go, gays!" Like I depicted in the book. That's obviously humorous embellishment, right? Um, so, yeah, you you heighten the truth, you you bring it down, and sometimes you're painfully painfully honest about something. Um, I would say the only time I ever cried during while I was making it was when I was drawing my dog. Oh, yeah. Ginger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that to me, that's, that, that's the thing. Tell a good story, mm -hmm. you know, you know, trim it as you need to, massage it, whatever, tell a good story and make it, make it you, make yeah. it, make it how you wanted it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I was successful that way yeah. for me at least. Yeah. yeah. I do like to tell students that it's called memoir, not factoir. Um, yeah. But I, I don't really embellish, honestly. Um, I do sometimes, for narrative's sake, um, combine characters. Like if two people, like for Kiss and Tell, yeah. there was a friend. And the book's not about friendship, because that would have been different. But there's a friend who I had over a number of years. And there's another friend who I had over a number of years. And then there was another one. And I combined them all into one yeah. person, because they all kind of served mm -hmm. the purpose of having my one bitchy friend. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah. I don't want to introduce three bitchy friends, like, yeah. so there's just one. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we know you have a lot of bitchy friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, so, so to tell a story so it's not get, doesn't get confusing to, mm -hmm. to the reader or whatever. But I, I, I'm sad that they weren't saying you go gays, because I assume that that actually happened. Oh, no, no, no. Why I just you made it there. You know, they were, like, throwing confetti and stuff. I mean, come on, really. They, I don't they, know. I mean, they are, in Minnesota, we're really nice. I mean, we're really nice on the surface, at least. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we were, I mean, I was, of course, making, I was exaggerating, because 
we really were so supported by these total strangers, like getting our marriage license. And then I compared it with Kim Davis in Kentucky, who was just mm. just being a complete ass yeah. to you know everybody yeah. because she just couldn't deal with gay people. You were spiritually honest. But what's that? Spiritually honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, you know, I like to be funny. You know, I, I like to. I think you know, like let's try to be funny. So I mean, this. Uh, I mean, do, do you resonate with this idea of authenticity versus fact? Then. Um. Yeah. Or is it more about narrative concerns? Like you just. You I'm need more to... about narrative concerns. Like I don't generally throw in a joke that I didn't tell. Mm -hmm. However, I might have told it not as good in real mm -hmm. life. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no one needs to see me do the punchline wrong like three yeah. times before I get it right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for and sure. it's you know it's comics like you know like yeah. just you know you can do whatever you want. It's you know, straight like to it, the point. You're, like you yeah. said, it's not fact. It's not factoir, mm -hmm. and and like yeah, be like yeah, I'll totally throw in something funny just because I like to be funny, you yeah. know, and, I, and and yeah, I just yeah, I, I I just I totally again just stress tell a good story, you know, well, make I the mean, reader interested, bubbles. have a reason for telling the story. You know? But I put thought bubbles on my cat, though. I mean, that's, I wouldn't say it's <laughs> embellished, but it's what I believe to be the truth. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's okay. really about what you believe to be the truth. Yeah. yeah. There's also the problem of memory, right? Like memory is a oh narrative. <laughs> is a, memory is a narrative as a narrative project, right? And mm. I don't know about you, you all, but my memory is shit. Mm. I have done so many things to these memory cells over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I've abused them tremendously. And so often, I mean, I'll make up all the dialogue and stuff from a scene and, and oftentimes sort of who's in it. Um, and I do feel, I've also, in the story that I did for Queer, uh, Seductive Summer, I combined also a bunch of uh, roommates into one character and that made narrative sense. But then also I just don't oftentimes remember what happened really. And well, so I th as long as you think you're being truthfully, uh, truthful uh, and honest, I feel yeah. like, I mean, for me, that's, that's my gauge. I've definitely had that's stories just... published where my mom's like, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, you got that wrong. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, I feel like anyone I, I let read my comics who were in them, they're like, well, that, that's, not, that's not how I saw it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, th th that's just the nature of memory. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your, whole, your new book is all about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, so, okay, so what about as a reader then, to flip the, the script on this, like, do you, uh, there is some power to memoir, right? I mean, there's, there's a reason we sit down with that, pieces of that genre and are drawn to them. Um, and it's, re, it's a relationship to the idea of truth. I mean, think about if you walk, if you come running into a party and you're like, oh my God, the craziest thing just happened to me on my way over here, everyone sort of perks up. But if you run into a room and say, oh my God, the craziest thing, I just thought of the craziest thing that could have happened to me on the way here. <laughs> Everyone's like, whatever, you know? So, so there's something about the idea of truth that's mm. compelling, even if I don't really care when I read a memoir, how many roommates they have. Or, yeah. So yeah. W w as a reader of memoir, what draws, what about that genre and its relationship to truth is compelling? Do you ever read something and think that just feels disingenuous? Yes. You can smell it. Yeah. You can fucking smell it. Yeah. And you can also tell mm -hmm. when someone's being vindictive versus yeah. honest. Or, or holding back something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh man, I wish we could. I wish I could get examples because I'm trying to think of something. Like that, but but I don't want to call. I mean, I really don't want to call out anybody. I mean, yeah. I, I just. It'll wish, never leave this room. Yeah. I have a friend who I've been coaching through potentially writing a memoir who um, left out something pretty significant in their life and blamed their anger issues on something pretty benign. And um, and it's it's a fun piece of writing, but I kind of had to say, well, don't you think maybe like I mean, you don't have to write about this, but maybe this other very traumatic thing that happened to you around that time might have been mm -hmm. had something to do with that as well, and not just this yeah. normal thing yeah. that everyone gets. Were you saying like maybe dig deep? You're not maybe yeah. digging deeper. Well, that just maybe you want to look it, at like what the purpose of. You could just tell like when someone's like not being like they're. When someone's being flip, like for example, um, I will call out this one uh, memoir that because I don't know her um, <laughs> that I read. It was uh, oh, uh, she was really great. Um, she she was in Parks and Rec that mm. book. Um, that was the fr the the blonde one. She's mm. really cute. Amy Poehler, yes. Yeah, so, so I read her memoir thinking like, oh, this will be great to get an insight into her life. Like I read the whole book and I was entertained, but I didn't come out of it feeling like I knew her at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously you can't know someone from their book, but like I feel like the really good memoirs, you come out 
thinking about yourself in relation to them and you think you come out mm -hmm. feeling like they're your friend, even though that's crazy. <laughs> Mari is not your, any of your friends. I am all of your friends. <laughs> did, did you Stay think, over there. <laughs> did, you think, did you think it was glib or like just... It, that it yeah, just well, I mean, I don't think or? she really wanted to write about, like to open up. I think she wanted, you know, oh, hey, I'll write a joke book. And it was... Just call it a joke book yeah. or something other than memoir or it just I mean I mean the memoir could be many things just like comics can be many things and it's fine for her to call her wh what you want it just didn't personally appeal to me as someone who likes to dig deep and feel compassion like that's the whole point of reading memoir or anything for me is just to feel like get a different point of view to, to you know learn about other people and learn about myself la 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 yeah. Well, you can, yeah. Um, so to that idea, um, do you, uh, I feel like the great memoirs where uh, they, they can construct a, a, a protagonist um, who um, has a certain uh, pr point of view, perspective, but then a really good memoir, you come out of it as the reader sort of seeing beyond even the, what the writer you can see beyond the writer, if that makes sense. Mm. You sort of um, see where they're coming from, and if it's well constructed, you can see where they, where their bound, their flaws might be, or their sort of limitations might be, and see beyond them and their perspective. You can even have like the hero's journey, like the the it, a, a skilled memoirist could, you know, have like a, a an arc and a character arc, and like well, this is you know have an ending where like well, this is how I changed or how these events mm -hmm. uh, shaped my viewpoints now or something like that. I mean, you can, you can frame it as a, as, a, as a journey, as a story, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I didn't say I'm gonna write my marriage journey, but I think there's, uh, I, I was surprised by the end that I was really like so gung-ho on marriage because the whole time I was just like uncomfortable about it. Mm -hmm. But you know, you just, through that lived experience to use that phrase mm -hmm. that is just being used so much, I. Uh, really had to, you know, just, you know, Rob, you know, you're not the punk ass kid you used to be. And like, yeah, you've, <laughs> you've mainstreamed in some ways and, and, then, and that's okay. That is, that is my hero's journey. Like, <laughs> selling, selling I, out. I, I selling out. out. Yeah. yeah. Cause there, I mean, and I'm, yeah, and I'm, again, I'm making light of this, but I mean, I do kind of feel like I had to adjust yeah. certain ideals about for, for this infuriating world that we live in, you yeah. know, with the, all its dumbass rules and true, prejudices true. and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Gen X really has to get over our feelings about selling out and what that means. Because <laughs> sometimes it's not always bad and sometimes oh, it's yeah. definitely bad, but like we got to do what we got to do. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually glad I'm not living still in a punk squat in New York. <laughs> that was, I mean, yeah. But why? Uh, <laughs> because there's just too much heroin involved, <laughs> pretty much. But that's all another issue. Um, <laughs> Sell out, <laughs> right? I know. Right, that was good. It just sold out. Um, <laughs> can we can we change the slides so I'm not staring at my oh, books? Oh yeah, 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 fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so actually, so wait, I, I what do kind have, of books? Uh, can, oh, oh, sorry, I do have a question for Rob. Can, um, jumping on what he said before. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. Um, so thinking about. Um, uh, you, you're talking about sort of a, a moment in time in terms of like, you know, you growing out of a certain phase. I, I do think about um, the, uh, the political importance of memoir, like as sort of the social and, um, and political importance where you're detailing something not only about your private journey, but also something that is true of your generation of gay men in this particular, in this instance. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I think it's important for people later to know that it was actually a quandary to whether to adopt the idea of marriage, which was this this patriarchal oh. bullshit institution yeah. that was felt really that we were always denied, and then suddenly we're like, okay, maybe you can come in and like, oh, okay, fuck you, we'll do it, you know, yeah. right, yeah, um, and it, especially when it meant such horrible things in terms of for so long. Um, so, uh, how do you think about this book and in general, maybe the memoir work that you do in terms of its historical importance? Well, yeah, I mean, personal. I mean, one of the reasons we got married too, we were like, you know, okay. Um, there was that excitement, like, you know, come on, this is historical. I mean, we can get married, the fuck? Really? Like, I never wanted to do it. I never thought about it. never thought it would happen. All of a sudden, bam, we could do it. And, you know, 
and we just kind of, yeah, I think the I think the historical importance of it was like let let's be seen and heard, and and I even I and I called John my husband. I usually say husband. I don't say partner. Most people seem seem to say partner these days, but I, that was me, reminds me of a law firm, mm -hmm. and uh, I just feel like that's like my little like gay white male like yeah he makes my husband you know like and it's and it's for real we're married um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I just thought it was an important thing to document. And, and I'm still surprised. I remember thinking, somebody's going to scoop me, god damn it. You know, somebody's going to write about the, their gay, gay, gay marriage memoir, and they never, and nobody did. And it was up to me to make history. <laughs> 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 so I wrote, you know, so I didn't get scooped. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I wanted to mark this moment. And, and I also wanted to mark the moment uh, that in 1971 when Jack, Baker and Mitch McConnell, Mitch Michael McConnell, oh, oh. excuse me, got married. I know, got married in in a little apartment in Minneapolis. Like you know, and, and if you go on the New York Times, you can see like a video of them. They they filmed it, and it's like the cute. And you oh cannot believe how adorable it is. They're in their little headbands, their little hippies, oh. and they have a guy with like no mustache but a beard. He's kind of Amish looking, and he's oh. reading that. It's beautiful, and it's again 1971. Yeah. 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 History, um, Mari, Do you think? I mean, you're, I feel like you're a, a lot of your members, especially this l latest book, is is much more. Re it's very intimate, and it doesn't sort of have a lot of political dimension in the sort of the way that it, we're talking about. But some of your other work has. Um, how do you think about the political ramifications of memoir in your work? I think it's really important in general for anyone who's um, been who's considered marginalized. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think. Comics memoir especially is super important uh, because where else do we get the chance to tell our own story through our own eyes? Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten written about so much uh, mm -hmm. by people who aren't us. So I think I, I am very interested in seeing people who draw themselves mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. Yeah, um, the the book I'm working on now, I do actually have a uh, a chapter on um, my marriage journey, um, but um, uh, you scooped me. But <laughs> but um, but I also uh, thinking about HIV and my my particular. I'm 52, yeah. and uh, uh, p uh, men a little bit older than me uh, knew what it was like to have condomless sex and watched all their friends die. Uh, people, who, yeah. men who are a little bit younger than me, uh, grew up with prep. Okay. And um, and viral and detectable with the cocktail drugs, and so they didn't see they didn't. So my particular generation, this thin sliver actually, is uh, I grew up with only knowing condom sex, only associating sex with death, and then figuring out a way past that. So when I first started dating my not my now husband, we um, we. Uh, got tested, we waited six months, and we got tested again, and then I had the first bareback sex of my life. Yeah. And it was, dating at that point for our generation was taking each other's lives in, our, in each other's hands, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. It meant death if we screwed up, um, potentially. So it was this sort of, and I, I think that's such a specific generational thing, um, and I want that to record that in some way, and memoir seems yeah. the best way to do that. Yeah. I definitely, um, as a promiscuous person in the 80s, like I just assumed that I would die of AIDS. Um, that was just the assumption. Like it's yeah. shocking that I'm 50. Yeah. Um, also, I did a lot of drugs <laughs> and, and other stupid memoir, shit. Also, high hitchhiking. But anyway. <laughs> Just, I can't really, I can't wait to read that book. And do you see that as, like, is that one of the major threads or is that the major thread of the narrative? That the, 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 the pitfalls and terrors of sex in the age of AIDS growing up in the, um, uh, how many, yeah. you know what I mean, like, yeah. I think. Um, so uh, not all of it relates directly to that, but a big, a uh, theme is about the relationship of sex and death, yeah. and and that I'm I am of, of course uh, my I am constructed from uh, scarred is the wrong word maybe but like I'm constructed from these experiences from yeah, um, yeah. from my early associations of course but but then it also gets weird where like some of the best sex of my life has been around death so uh, one of the chapters I talk about 
I was doing porn, and I, my grandmother was dying. Okay, this is really weird. Um, can I overshare a little bit? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna overshare. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so my uh, my grandmother was dying, and I had been I was uh, I was a porn actor at the time, and I was flown down. I was taken down to Southern California. I didn't know where I was going, and I wound up like around the corner from my grandmother's place. Wow. And I couldn't drive, and there was no Lyft or Uber at the time, and there's no cat cabs that would go out there. So I couldn't get to her, mm. but I knew she was dying, and I was doing this scene. And I went to my scene partner, and I was like, I, I need to, I can't, what am I doing? Like, I need to get over to my grandmother. He was like, you can't do that. There's no way for you to get over there. You can't walk there. It's too far. And you can't, no, no, no one will drive you from the production. It's too tight. Yeah. So, so <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, um, uh, and so we did the scene, and it was the best scene I ever did. Wow. The sex was phenomenal. I mean, you know, porn sex is usually, it's sort of, it's very performative, and you can take eight hours to do a 20 minute scene. It's very like, you know, five minutes in this position, and then you're like, okay, here we go, you gotta move the ball, you know, the, the lights underneath your balls, and like, you know, get, get your blood sugar up, and we five minutes in this position, right? Uh, not exactly sexy in the normal way, but this was like, this was like bonkers, really sexy. I mean, this needs so to be good. a book. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then I got home. I found out that literally my grandmother had died when I was doing uh, the scene or the B roll. So I called the guy up, the the um, uh, the scene partner, and I said, "Hey, and I know this is really weird, and um, you know, but can we dedicate our monumental fuck to my grandmother?" And he was like, "Yeah, I get it. Absolutely." He was living with his own grandma in Ohio at the time, and. We're like, and okay, so even though it was called like redneck fuckers or something like that, it was, it's in our minds, it's, you know, grandma's best fuck, right? Yeah, like, or so yeah. best fuck for grandma? No, we didn't yeah. fuck grandma. You know what I mean? Amazing. <laughs> so. And I'm so glad that that is your story about fucking in death. Because yeah. that could have gone off the rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a testament to you that that's not going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in your book? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. I can't wait. When is your when is your book coming out, Jess? Oh, how dare you? Ah! <laughs> supposedly, uh, supposedly Pride Month, twenty twenty five. Yeah. So yeah, I got. You think, I gotta, you think you can do it? I, I gotta I gotta yeah, yeah. carve out some. Okay, this is another question I want to ask about like carving out, and we've talked a lot oh, about this. God, yeah. Carving out time to do the pages, to do the work. It, comics are, you know, it's a medium that it does not require a lot of resources, which is wonderful, but it requires just time. How do you, I mean, you've battled with this with this book as well. How do you find the time to carve, that you yeah. carve out to make the pages? Yeah, it just, it's just catch as catch can, you know, like it, it ebbs and flows. And especially if you're doing, nearing me, I had like long periods of, of inactivity. You know, I was not, um, uh, not engaging. John and I were, we were selling our house. Dog died. We bought another place. We moved into an apartment in between. Blah blah blah. Just all this, and I'm just when I when there's a lot going, on, I just I can't. It's really hard for me to concentrate. The diary comics I do on my Patreon that you that you read, Mar Marty. It's like those those are much easier because they're in the moment, and I'm not trying to be good or whatever. I'm just trying to jot down moments such as these, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it. Uh, and I'm also analog cartoonist. I still have not. I still haven't touched digital. I haven't done any other than Photoshop, cleaning up stuff in Photoshop. And I and my next book, I think maybe should I do that? But I really, really do like. It. I, I, I really it. like that. I have to learn that shit too. It's, and and I, I feel like I gotta you. get it's that so work easy done. And it makes it so much faster. I, I know. And the color, you don't have to deal with cleanup. I hate cleanup. And you don't. And the and the colors are true. Like yeah, you don't have yeah. to like. Adjust like that is the worst. When I started doing color comics, Although, I'm like, oh, oh, look at this beautiful watercolor piece that all the color just drains away. Yeah, you scan yeah, it. Sorry. yeah. There's <laughs> and there's you know like with, with the colored pencils that I've been using. Oh, that color I'm pencils using, are so uh, bad for your hand. Oh, oh no, but that, but that I love. I love the physical feeling of it, and I really love like the cartoonists that I really. The, some of the ones I love the most are just they're they have a kind of a scrawly. You know they're analog. They're like by hand, and they, and I just just eat that up. I just love that so much. Um, so I'm just I'm reluctant. But maybe if I do this whole long other book, 
that's coming that's coming together more and more. Try and it had, you in know, little like, bits. Don't don't just try yeah. to dive into a book. I mean, yeah. you know better than that. Yeah, like, you know, but Rob, don't do that. God, <laughs> just tr- just okay. do it bit yeah. by bit. So, yeah. so yeah. both of you both of you do diary comics. Mm. Yeah, uh, which I find which is really interesting, and it's it's and you will not soon too. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Mari's been trying. I, I've been I've been thinking about dabbling in the the diary comic uh, idea. But it, so what is the difference between diary comics and memoir comics, and do they feed into each other, what's the relationship? I mean, I, th- I think a diary comic is a memoir comic, but a memoir comic is not a diary comic. It's like a lesbian is. I, I, you know, <laughs> I also want to, but, but I want to, but I want to answer like your question. Even though I do comics full time, like there was a long p- period of time where I wasn't doing it, um, and and I found it really helpful to find jobs where I would be working really. Um, really intensely for short bits of time or long bits of time and then spend the rest of the year doing comics. So that's how I was able to, because when I was doing 40 hours a week, um, it was impossible to get any amount of work done. I don't know how you get anything done, Justin. You are so freaking busy. Like, yeah. you're the busiest person I know in, like, always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in every way possible. Um, you need to quit your job. And uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> but what, what was your other question? Sorry. <laughs> um, diary comics versus memoir comics, and thank you. Yeah. Di- diary comics, to to me, like the way I use them, they are in the moment, mm. you know. And I, I have an email to myself. I keep it like I have a new one this week, and I like, and I just as I as I tick one off, you know. And sometimes I'll I'll spend, I'll do several entries on one day because there's just so much so much packed in. Like this day will. While I'm talking, just get a picture. You guys just don't move one minute because this will, this is going to go in the diary. And it, you know, it's not going to be. And the thing that's really wonderful about it, the thing I love about these, um, get Mari better. <laughs> the thing that's wonderful about them is that um, you. I'm afraid of reference. Don't have to. You don't have to be good. Although I really do. Sometimes I, I do an entry and I'm like, wow, that really did turn out well because I really took my time. And other times it's kind of sloppy, but it's in the moment and I really Rob's like doing that. Rob's comics are and it's never really, sloppy. And it's really wonderful to just yeah. let, oh, Mari, yours are really fun. I love yours. Um, but they just, it really feels good to like get them out of you. And it's also good work practice. Like when, because I'm, while I'm not working on my, my next book, um, it, I find it really helpful to just at least keep that little practice up and, and try and totally. force myself sometimes to like, you know what, why don't if I'm drawing myself just drawing the street, walking down the street, why not just, you know, draw a perspective, like change the perspective a little, because it's really easy when you're in the moment to just draw very straightforward, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Maybe change change up the perspective, just get a little, little crazy, get a little crazy here and do it a little differently, you know, just, but it all depends because your daily mood shift and your, and your, uh, and the time you want to spend on it shifts too. It, it changes from day to day. So I just, I just love the in the moment quality of diary comics a lot. But I'm also doing them for my patron, and I'm doing them for people to read. So I'm, again, I'm being funny and I'm making shit up. I mean, it's still happening, but I'm like embellishing and, and sometimes, yeah. So, I find yeah. that you experiment more, and so do I, with diary comics, yeah. where I like I notice, oh, he's using a new color now, and yeah. oh, he's doing this, and oh, look at that perspective, and I, there, there's something definitely freeing about that, um, especially with, that's why I love Patreon so much, is I feel like I could just, um, just, just fuck around with stuff, and I, it doesn't, like, I don't, have to be consistent or anything because like I could use a new pen and, and like Mari, no one care. And you know what, Mari too, the other thing, it's just they're just fun. Like when I get the email that yours are out or Tessa's are out, it's like they're fun. They're like it's they're like, yeah, I get to read what's going on with Mari right now. And like and just these silly little and sometimes and sometimes it's like, oh fuck, what happened to you know I remember when something happened and you were like, I got a horrible bit of news. I'm like, oh, and I had a feeling. I knew what it was. I had a feeling of what it was. And then oh. later on, I was right. But uh, I don't remember yeah. what this is. I get horrible news. The ho- the, you know, the horrible <laughs> news that sent you wondering why you're in this profession. Oh. Come on. You're like, oh, which oh, was one? Was that when <laughs> my book was banned? Or was that when no. I lost my publisher? Yeah, that's the oh, one. Yeah. I thought you, I'd let you say it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wait, so, so, I don't okay, want to so. tell your story. <laughs> Thank you, white man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> um, 
Mar Mari, I know that you, we talked about this, and you have like a time limit when you do your diary comics. I, I mean, I naturally just do them mm. in a certain amount of time, but um, but it really does help for the daily practice. And also, you're right, like when when you're like, oh, I have all these other things to do. Well, at least I make did my diary comics today, and I give myself like, I don't know, 10 minutes or right. something. And just, oh, do you really? Oh, it's really fast, yeah. For, uh, for one entry? Yeah. You, really? Uh, really fast. Just... That's why it looks so crappy. <laughs> um, do, do you do you do some do you have a like a oh, time limit no, no, for your no, absolutely not no that would that would fuck me up yeah oh. no, absolutely not no, how, how just, long do you think you spend on an average diary comic entry God you know uh, a lot anywhere between ten minutes and a half an hour even like if really there, oh yeah I mean no, so there good. was one that I did it was really detailed and I don't usually get that detail but I just I felt and I was like wow it's too bad this is because I don't actually take them seriously and people are saying oh you should put them into a book I'm like yeah but they're so sloppy and they're on pencil and they and it'd be really and they're in color and they'd be really expensive and who would want to read all these things about me taking a walk and enjoying the fall air you know what I mean it's like there some of it is so trivial you know but uh, you but, mean the happy moments yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, the, yeah. Well, so that's happy the, moments are trivial. It's like the, yeah, the no one wants to read that. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, so that's also interesting. I, mean, I feel like you know, post Harvey Picard, right? Where Harvey Picard sort of showed us that you can have a mundane life in some way and make that interesting through it, it, its depiction in comics. Um, I feel like uh, some of the best comics I know have come out of that that freeing, uh, and some of the worst because I also am. I get bored with a lot of comics that are That's about That's the thing about writing lives. or any kind of art is, I mean, it's not for everybody, but also um, the I think the gift of a true writer, like a really talented writer, is you can make anything interesting. Oh, seriously, yeah. Rob, Rob Clow once said something like that. He referred to, like, bad, I guess, bad diary comics as, like, uh, today had oatmeal for breakfast. Like, that That would be a bad, you know, that yeah. like super trivial or whatever. But to me, you can... If you if you read them all strung in a row, you know it can really even just those little m m uh, trivial things can build up a rhythm, and you just get the rhythm, mm -hmm. the feel of a person's day to day life, mm -hmm. and and if they, and if you can make you really can make anything interesting. I mean, making toast can you know you can think about things while you're making that toast that transcend something. I don't know, but but. Yeah, I mean, I just think anything is possible. You do not have to have a great adventure mm -hmm. to tell a good story. It doesn't have to be a great, dangerous, filled journey. That's exhausting sometimes. Like, I, I love, I, I kind of exclusively read diary comics now. And I, I, I mean, I will read a good, like, a graphic novel or something that, that I've, or, or for work, like if I'm, you know, reviewing or whatever books, like I'll, I'll still read things, but like the, the ones I read for myself are people's Substacks or Patreons or whatever of Diary Comics. Yeah. I don't know, there's something soothing to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I like that they don't have to have all this tension. And But, you know, it's fun when they do, but it's, it's nice when they don't. And I like mm. reading about people's dogs and stuff. I mean... Mm. So, so when you then move into longer form narratives, and this is something that I've been grappling with with this book, because it's one thing, it's fairly easy for me to do, I don't do diary comics yet, but, but you know, taking small vignettes from my life and making comics out of them, that's, that feels natural to me. Um, but then figuring out what the narrative arc is over a, many pages, mm -hmm. like in, in constructing yourself as, as, a, as a protagonist that, ha that has a narrative arc, um, how do you sort of think about story structure? How do you, as you as the pages page count goes up? You don't. You mean no. for diary? With diary or? comics? No, 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 no. Not for diary. Oh. Well, as you, as you <laughs> move into memoir. Diary, right, yeah. yeah, as you move into memoir. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, queer ass memoir. Ask, <laughs> ask that question one more time. Yeah. Though. Okay. So um, just so the, the, the short version. Yeah. Like, sort just, of. Yeah. Thinking about um, as you uh, write longer narratives, uh, and you have to create sort of character arcs and you know thematic yeah. arcs for a longer piece. That's a really different than a short vignette of like this cool thing happened. Yeah. Right. Everyone can do that sort of six page whatever. But like to do two hundred pages. Like how do you construct? How do you create narrative tension? How do you about your own life? Uh, um, do do you, uh, Mari? Do, do you you structure your stories? Like you tell you write it all out first, right? Sometimes yes. my last book, I didn't write anything out. In fact, I had no yeah, idea how it was going to yeah, end yeah. or go okay. at all. Yeah. Um, Which is it's almost like a diary comic. In fact, yeah. I did include diary comics into that book. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so would. Did you like doing that in the moment? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. And so you didn't, you, you actually got handed like 
arcs. I mean, you got like, like, oh my God, like near the end, there's that surprise. And, and I mean, and it all kind of worked out. It like, fell into place. It the, fell into the place. The universe yeah. provided my narrative yeah. arc. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, universe. So, but that's terrifying. That could have not happened. Oh, yeah. No. But you know oh what? I bet, but you know what? I bet. If, I bet maybe maybe something else. If it hadn't, no, then maybe I could have just pitted out. <laughs> yeah. I could have. There was. I was a, yeah. like a couple hundred pages in, and I'm like, where is this going? This has all been for nothing. Like I like I don't know. There, was, there are definitely parts of that book where I'm just like, what? Why am I doing this? Like nothing. This is getting worse, not better. You're giving your heart tremors. I know, but but then yeah. things happen, and it was fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But it just as easily couldn't have. I, I it was a ama- a huge amazing coincidence. Some of the things that happened in that book, um, you can't you can't make this stuff up. Or yeah. if you could, it would just it wouldn't work. So have in other books have you thought about? And, and by the way, we're gonna uh, get to some questions because um, we're going to the, nearing the end. So think of some questions. Um, but I just want to follow up quickly. Like d- uh, your, some of your other books, have you thought about that narrative arc beforehand? Yes. Okay. Yes. Normally, when I write it, when I've written books, I have it all written out. I have scripts and stuff. I do the the traditional uh, thing that publishers like, which is like what's this about, synopsis, mm-hmm. and then script, and then break it down, thumbnails, or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to doing that. Um, and it, and I always tell people don't write anything that you're close to, like wait until there's time, um, and also plan everything out. But like I broke all my own rules, and I think it's the best book I've done. So. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> But, I mean, not saying that the other one. Buy all my books, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, any questions from the audience? <laughs> yes. I know who you are. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is my whole weekend. <laughs> um, can you speak Could you go to the about... mic, please? So everybody oh, can hear uh, you. Oh, I, you know, oh, want oh. me to request, uh, I can repeat the question also. If, or either way, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Um, so, so my question was basically, you talked a little bit about the time constraints of writing memoir and some of these deadlines you impose on yourself. But I wanted to know about some of the mental constraints of writing this memoir, some of the challenges that come with processing you know, these really difficult moments like you just described, Justin, these painful moments in your life and you have to put them to page. How is that? Does that just sometimes derail your day and you get to a point and you're like, I know I'm gonna have to write about this fucked up thing that happened. How do I get to it? Like, can I address that today? Does it wait till next week? So. When I was writing this memoir, um, I thought you loved me. I uh, was trying to figure things out, and it was from I was really dissecting like this very painful time in my life, and um, so I had this corkboard and I put post its on it, and I was like, oh, these are the things I remember, um, and I didn't have anywhere to put it, so I put it in my dining room. And every time I ate a meal, I would just be staring at these painful memories. <laughs> um, it got better once I got a studio and I just had a place to separate, you know, do that on my own. But it's it's hard. Like memoir is not cathartic. Anyone who thinks it is um, is wrong. <laughs> uh, I, 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 def- I definitely there there have been times where I can't. Uh, time that I can't get to the, um, to do the work. Like, um, I had a, uh, a boyfriend die in, um, while I was there in Amsterdam and, um, I couldn't write about that for 10 years. And then I was able to do a story. And then the, the one that I did for, for queer also, I couldn't write about that for, you know, at least five years. Yeah. Um, but then I did, you know, like, so the, your sort of body tells you it's a very visceral mm-hmm. feeling, but it's okay, we can do this now. Yeah. yeah it's like, you, you know, when you're ready. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you don't generally start if you, if there's something that you are not going to be able to process. If it's some, and it sounds like you're talking about even like a trauma, you know. Hopefully, you don't start and uh, before you know you can actually write about it and and untangle that in 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 words and pictures. Um, I like to think you would know your 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 subconscious would say, yeah, you know, maybe you better just put that on the shelf for a while, like wait ten years, like Justin, and yeah. Your so. body will, at least my body will tell me. I I recently, yeah. uh, the yeah. last couple of years, had a really traumatic situation, and I really want to write about it because it's so interesting. And I started, and I um, I'm on Lexapro, and I've had therapy now after, and I mean, this the past book wouldn't have been written if I'd had those things probably. Um, 
uh, but but this so but I have help. I have a support system. I'm in a better place now. Um, but even so, I had a full on. I wouldn't call it a panic attack. I would call it. Um, suddenly, I was right back there again, even though it had been a couple of years, and like I could smell the smells, and I and I was it was just pure adrenaline fear, and um, and then I had a therapy session. She's like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe don't sit there looking at Facebook for six hours at your nemesis. Like, <laughs> like, like, and my therapist actually helped me, helped guide me into ways to better do it. Um, one thing was to have a timer um, go, like, so allow myself, like, I don't, whatever, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, but not six hours, uh, specifically not six hours, because that was my <laughs> threshold, apparently. But I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. But also, here's the thing, though. The longer you wait, like your story is always going to be your story. Like that doesn't go away. And the longer you wait, it's going to get better because you'll have more perspective and, um, and yeah, you'll just, you'll just see the bigger picture more. And I mean, so it doesn't hurt to step away from it unless you're about to die, in which case you should just do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that actually, um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank um, you guys. And, and anyone else who wants a question, maybe just, uh, if you want to walk up to the, that Mike, um, uh, just a quick um, um, to follow up on that. How do you, uh, as um, the question's happening, um, how how do you feel like uh, we are all cartoonists of a certain age now? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like um, our maturing process has affected your approach to memoir? I mean, yeah, I know more mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I mean, you just I just feel like I've gotten stronger, and I know, and I know how to trim things and 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 make it. Compelling yeah. and yeah, yeah I yeah. I, hopefully, you're just getting better as you get older. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. like that. Yes. So, um, when you're writing a memoir versus when you're writing a diary comic, right? You're writing a memoir. You're looking back at the past from today. Um, in the case of Rob, you mentioned like you were specific. The thought of documenting your marriage was important to you. Like your idea of documenting something. When you're doing your um, Diary comics, you kind of are documenting things without realizing it um, when you look back. Yeah. And one of the things that hits me about, like, what it reminds me of, the co Rob, is your comics looking at in curbside music. Like, it's, a, it's like a history of music from that era. You yeah. know, there's so many references to it. Have you guys looked back and, and looked at and realized in retrospect, especially from your diary comics, that they kind of form this memoir, this, this, this history? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, in my book, Curbside Boys, like, I would have, you know, I was, I was living in New York City during the bulk of writing that book. Uh, of do, it was a weekly strip, and, and I, would, I would put the songs that I was listening to, and the characters were really, in, like, one character, Nathan, was really into, like, Van Halen and stuff like that, and, <laughs> and Drew was more like a New Order sort of boy. And, uh, and I would put, you know, and I would put in, and I was crazy about the Dyke Band uh, team dress, and so I would put them, I would document in there, and, and I don't know how much of a history of music it, it reads for anybody else, but it really reads as a history of what, what I was really, I mean, they're really autobiographical. Fiction is autobiographical as, as, as is actual autobiograph autobiography. Um, it, it takes me back and I just go, oh, God, crazy, Rob, you were so into Sleater Kenny back then, weren't you? And, uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, so, yeah, it's, diary comics are, you're recording, anything you're doing is like, it's a history, and before you know, all your work, you, before you know it, the years have stacked up and your comics have stacked up and you have a whole record of your creative life for better and worse. It can be hard to look at some of it sometimes. Do you but. go back and look at old diary comics? You know, I've, I've since starting the Patreon, I have like several notebooks stacking up, and one day I'm gonna like sit and read them because I really enjoy doing them. It's really fun. Sometimes it I have to really force myself. It is interesting going back. To, I've yeah. been doing them since 2014, and yeah. I just stopped doing them. Um, so I have quite like thousands of them on. Do you, my do you read them? Do you go back and read them, or Sometimes, have you? Sometimes, especially when I'm trying to figure out what was going on, like when I'm researching new memoir mm -hmm. things, and I'm just like, oh wow, it's almost like reading someone else's life, and even Dude, though it were, doesn't feel that. Yeah, like, yeah you were taking are, notes. Yeah. You were taking notes. Basically, the whole fucking yeah. thing. So that's gonna really help your process when, when, we'll when you see. get it, when you when and if you get it going, you know. But if you think about it, like memoir is really more in this, like in a way nostalgic because you're like remembering what things were, but diary comics are so in the moment, and if you add things like music and all the things that you're doing, like that, that feels more historical in a lot of ways, almost like photography. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, uh, any other question? We're at the, at the very end here. Or 
You're all yeah, set there. Yeah. Um, there was a reference to this a little bit earlier, but when you're t when you're telling a when you're writing memoir, you're telling your story, but you are often also telling other people's story. Mm. And how do you decide uh, what things, especially if you feel it's important to yeah. the story, if like right, this is an important detail and it should be included, like should you? tell this, even though it's not your story to tell? Do you need to check with the other person? Do you fictionalize it so that it doesn't include the per other person's details? How, how do you deal with those situations? That's, it, that's a really tricky one. Um, I'll just say that I um, change names. Uh, I um, do some basic things to, to, to change identities if, if necessary, but, um, but I don't worry too much about it um, because it's an easy way to get tripped up. Um, mm. And if you can, be, you can become sort of overly obsessed with the ethics of memoir, and that can really create a stultifying effect on, on the work. Yeah, yeah. You can change the faces, especially yeah. if like old sex partners yeah. and stuff. It's really, it's, it's so easy. Just change their name and, and the way they look. They make them completely different looking. Or locations and, and it's cool. too. Like no yeah. one will know. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, my my rule of thumb is to tell my own secrets and not other people's secrets. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes they are intertwined, unfortunately, and um, it, that always depends on like my relationship with them. Like, my mom is very private, so like yeah. I will run things if they're about her. I'll run things by her beforehand after I finish them, and I just say, "Look, mom, I made this comic. Is this okay?" Yeah. And I mean, she never says no, but. Um, I don't know. She she might change her mind over time. That's just what happens. But like, yeah, people who are important to me. When I did, I thought you hated me, and it was about a friend that I still had. Like, I um, I was very careful and ran everything, and, I, and it was fun. Like, but it made it into a sort of way to connect with her, where I would just like text her like the new pages, like, oh look, do you remember this? Do you remember that? And I mean, it could be really fun. Um, and she was very sweet about it. And Mara, like, it also, isn't did she get a kick out of I me? Mean, John sometimes just, like gets a kick out of like, yeah, I'm, like, a, I'm a cartoon character, and he yeah, really yeah. enjoys it. Like yeah. sometimes, even though sometimes so he's like, oh my god, if you draw me at the computer one more time, I'm gonna <laughs> scream. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was this one um, comic that I, I y'all might remember this one where um, it was about me being a very bad date. Um, I went on a date with a prison warden, and um, but we kept on trying to get together, and it kept not happening um, until her roommate got a puppy, and then immediately I was there, like somehow magically <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, available. Yeah. And the whole date, I was completely ignoring her and playing with not her dog, which she had, but her roommate's puppy. It was a, it was a little black pug, and it was a baby, and it was just ridiculous, and it wanted all the attention. And at one point, she's like, oh, you know, this, this kind of sucks. Like, maybe you should pay me attention. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And then we start making out, and then, um, and then the dog started, like, tugging at the bottom of my pants um, and going, Arr, and like just being super cute. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I ignored her the rest of the date. And then like 10 years later, I made a comic about it and she was my friend on like <laughs> Friendster or something or MySpace. And I'm like, oh, Jackie, I don't know if you remember me, but I wrote a comic about us. And I thought she'd be like, oh, you. Because she broke up. I mean, not that we were dating, but she's, she's like, oh, I got involved with someone else right after that. Surprise, surprise. Horrible date. Um, anyway, long story short, I thought she would be miserable about it um, and, and cranky, but she was actually so stoked to be in a comic. Yes. She's like, I'm oh, yeah. sending this to all my friends. And Most like, people are. I, uh, thank you so much for coming to this. Thank you, Rob and Mari. Make memoir comics, make diary comics. You're all fabulous. Sorry, that last one was super long. I apologize. No, not at all. Thank you. <laughs>